Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This really caught my eye. This is out of Israel. They just found a six-legged deer. Now, it's not exactly a deer, but it's in that same kind of genius. Whee! The guy who, who filmed it, I guess he was in the military. He's always going to go what the government says. But I'm kind of a little skeptical about the location that they're saying. Quite possibly could be, but even if you do look at the maps of Israel, of where their Demona plant is. Demona is up, looks like it's up, up higher than uh, a lot of the part of the country. So you're going to get um, these rains that come in, not very often of course, but when it does rain, you're going to get the runoff. And it's going to go into these tributaries that actually lead out toward where this deer was found so here we go the Mona's kind of in this area right here right and it looks like these rivers these tributaries come together here come together here come together here so the Mona's over here so when it falls off of these mountains here this will eventually come over into the Mediterranean Sea now the Mediterranean Sea, they say, is one of the most radioactive seas in the world. For whatever reason, hey, I don't know. Could be a little bit of Demona. Could be a lot of the other countries that are surrounding it. Italy was also known to be dumping a lot of nuclear waste into the Mediterranean. I found that to be quite interesting. Now, what I've noticed is that they're just saying, Oh, don't worry, the deer... This uh, six-legged deer, he's doing great, guys. He's uh, He's got like three girlfriends. You know, he's he's uh, reproducing and he's doing great, you know. So I think what they're doing is they're preparing people to say, hey, everything's great, everything's fine. This is happening a lot in humans. But we're not actually having a lot of these babies being born because they're being aborted. So you're getting uh, upset families. They come to the realization, holy crap, you know, the, the, the odds of deformity are quite high nowadays. Let's dive into the story, shall we? Here he is. He's got these two extra legs growing out uh, the spine of his back. I guess they're saying, well, I mean, at least they're not uh, to the side, you know, he, he can still have a pretty normal life. But, uh, I mean, he's obviously uh, deformed with these extra legs. I'm just wondering how close this is to Demona. Even if where they're saying it is, it's still only 20 miles away from Demona, which is not a very large area to be away from a nuclear plant. And considering how small of a country Israel is, that you know you have one nuclear plant could contaminate your whole country quite easily. And I know they want to be a nuclear power, but there, that comes a price, man. If we say that you want nuclear weapons, you're going to have to pay a, a steep price. First of its kind. See, right off the bat, this is just a straight up lie. Because if you were just to do a Google search, six-legged deer, you would find many. Perhaps even dozens, up to 100 probably. So right off the bat, boom, lie. First, first word is the first lie. <laughs> So, spotted in Israel's western Negev. Okay. Now, this Negev region, this Negev region, like if you look at a map, this is all considered Negev, like a wilderness, right? This is basically the southern part of Israel. So they're saying they found this deer here in the western area. So, if I had to take a guess, I would say it'd probably be around where these uh, tributary meets this other river right here. Or maybe even in this section. And Demona's over here, and uh, kind of like in the mountains in this area. But as you can see, all it would take is you know the weather, you know the wind to blow, the water to, to, to fall out, and these hills right here, and it goes down to these rivers here, and then you're getting mutant deer over here. While gazelle sightings in Israel are already uncommon due to their endangered status, this one is reported to be the first one of its kind to be spotted. A gazelle with an extra pair of front legs growing on its back was discovered two weeks ago by an army reservist in the Nahal Habashar Nature Reserve in the western Negev. 
I would not be surprised, guys, that they literally told this Army Reservist guy, hey, say it was right here. But even if it's true that they did find him in nah Nahal Habashar in the western side, what does that tell you that that's even nuclear is even more dangerous than we originally thought? They might be trying to act like, hey, it's not Demona nuclear power plant. I mean, the whole fact of calling a nuclear power plant a demon, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you're going to call nuclear power Demona. I mean, it's it's really freaky in itself. And you got a, a six-legged deers now. And, you know, this could be kind of a sign of a red deer. You know, deer are kind of like the canary in the coal mine. Uh, when you see, like, these mutations and out in nature and now you got you know uh, chronic wasting diseases happening in deer you've seen deers of huge growths all over them and then there's people that eat this one deer like a whole hunting you know companion trips of people and they eat one deer and then they're all dead within a couple years from the CWD chronic wasting disease so you might want to cut down on your meat consumption uh, specifically deer because in about 40 US states they have found deer that have this chronic wasting disease if a deer poops in a field it could go right into a, any vegetables there the vegetables can uptake these prions because we live in the world of mutations now it's a heavy price that people will pay many future generations in the first time such a growth has been found on an Israeli gazelle an endangered species for whom Israel, home to about 5,000 wild, is the last stronghold. The gazelle was spotted by Nir Lichter, an army reservist, who saw the gazelle while stopping at the nature reserve for coffee. Lichter photographed the gazelle and sent it to the Society for Protection of Nature in Israel, noting something strange is on its back. The picture prompted an inquiry, led by Amir Baliban, director of urban nature and the team in charge of the gazelle valley in jerusalem an urban oasis home to the herds of wild gazelles whoa bro this, this is happening to humans you're just you're just not seeing it because it's not being reported but there's there's probably millions of women that have had their kids aborted because of, of stuff like this the inquiry found that the strange growth was in fact an extra pair of front legs growing from the gazelle's back. Balabin immediately rushed to the field to document the rare phenomenon and discovered that the gazelle, which began its life in the Kisifum area in the Safan of 2021, has managed to lead an impressive life in the Nahal Habasar Reserve. Whoa, so impressive, huh? He's got these impressive extra legs. I'm sure he's, he can run faster now. You, you got an upgrade. Contrary to expectation, Balibin found the gazelle is healthy, he's strong, and has three female girlfriend gazelles and a fawn from the previous fall. So he's he, he's a poppy. He has been seen hosting to the females in the fields, and the extra legs on his back pose no challenge to him. Israeli gazelles face multiple dangers. As for situations of Israeli gazelles generally right now, other organizations are fighting to save every remaining open space and ecological corridor. Well, if you want to save your open spaces, don't let fallout fall on it. <laughs> it just, it just trips me out. All these people that want to put like these parks, you know, next to like nuclear reactors, and they want to like make these parks like full of animals and stuff. Like, do they even realize like? Like there's such a thing as radiation and nuclear contamination and it's quite common it's pretty much you cannot operate one of these facilities without having a radiation leak in the surrounding areas um, another thing I was kind of wondering is like <laughs> I mean just the fact that Israel is mostly a desert this is where the nuclear reactor is right So they obviously they don't have a lot of water here so how would they cool down the reactor I guess it's uh, with deuterium and it's like a heavy water reactor 
so they use this to cool it down but uh, whatever's in here <laughs> looks pretty bad <laughs> um, yeah this could be just like open pond of nuclear waste for all we know they probably got dry casts who knows around here and uh, you can see looks like things were moved around here and uh, oh what's this they got more ponds so this this is a very old reactor this is uh, in the late 60s so I'm sure they have quite a bit of nuclear waste in this area uh, what's going on here yeah that's probably not good there and then uh, another thing that caught my eye was it looks like some of the stuff is also going to be draining this way probably some of it's going to go down into here all right looks like a very uh an, like a valley so you're going to have during these rain events water coming through this and great they got a nice little waterfall right here where all the nuclear waste collects so you can get a nice uh hot bath so i was just looking at uh this rivers so you can see how they do move in israel the largest stream in the northern Negev Desert, the Basor. It extends for almost 50 miles across the Agora Halutza sand dunes and the Gaza Strip. So it looks like it comes from the Agora Halutza to the Gaza Strip and then out to the Mediterranean Sea. So it would kind of explain where you're getting Demona nuclear waste into this western Negev region where you're finding these six-legged deer okay it doesn't rain very often there but when it does one thing that happens in the desert is that the, the desert it's so hard because it's so freaking hot it's almost like concrete but it's pretty hard stuff so when water goes on it it moves rapidly it moves fast it can go in many directions you could imagine that it's gonna fall some of these tributaries see you see some of these like places where it looks like water has gone and during these rain events and it's going to start heading out into uh, the western Negev region eventually and considering how long it's been here odds are that accumulating over time they're fighting to save every remaining open space making sure you know that they're going to block this off to a lot of people and improve the planning process and the development which will allow significant ecological transitions significant nuclear transitions there's still a lot of work to be done Balvin said such as improving areas to find as open spaces but in practice blocked by fences infrastructure and more another major issue for gills is poachers hunt them mainly for the purpose of treating their meat okay I wasn't the only one who thought this could have been Demona, if you look in the comments. But, um, what have they done? It's not we. We didn't. <laughs> We've been trying to prevent this for a long time. It's them. What have they done to our world? It's the deer in the headlights.